Check, check, check. Let's see if I can get through this first song. <laughs> Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Oh, we lift up your name with heart full of praise. Exalted. Hosanna in the highest Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings Glory, glory, glory to the King of Kings For we lift up your name Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I want to welcome everybody that's new. Um, if you're new, you can fill out a card at the desk over there, give us some information on you. If you have a prayer request, you can fill it out on that as well. I uh, want to welcome everybody online. Thank you for joining in. Be sure to share us uh, on your Facebook uh, and the connections on there. Um, it's cold in here this morning. I hear the heat is off. <laughs> um, uh, things that are coming up for us here. Uh, April 9th, we have Easter, and we're doing some baptisms on Easter. So if you know anybody that wants to be baptized, we would love for them to have them to join us. Uh, we're also doing a celebration of life for Rob Denton on April 15th at 2 p.m. There will be a reception and a meal to follow. Um, they're a wonderful family, and our hearts go out to them uh, at this awful time. Um, we're also doing outdoor services starting every third Sunday uh, in June, July, and August. Uh, this week's ministry highlight, uh, this week we're looking forward to our Lord's resurrection. During Holy Week, we consider Christ's passions in a more intense way than at other times during the year. Celebrate this Holy Week remembering again the cost of the gift of salvation and God's infinite love for us. Give thanks and come to Easter morning with expectant hearts. After your Easter egg hunt. <laughs> anyway, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here today. I lift up... Uh, us, our church this morning, uh, I just wish for blessings on our service today, Lord. Let everybody feel your hearts, um, and I just thank you, Lord, for being here. In Jesus' name, amen. About this. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I came up here to get the mic anyway. Um, I have an update for you on the Larry Cranford Scholarship Fund. Uh, we've had someone who gave half of it for matching funds to whatever the church people give toward Larry's scholarship. So, I just thought I'd pass that along to you folks. So. We're halfway there, 
as long as others do. Thank you. All right, if you'll stand and join. And just keep in mind, if you're cold, the more you move, the warmer you'll get. Praise is rising, eyes are turning to you. We turn to you. Hope is stirring, hearts are yearning for you. We long for you, cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away, oh
name of Jesus.
To Him all majesty ascribe and crown Him Lord of all. To Him all majesty ascribe and crown Him Lord of all. Oh, that with yonder sacred throng we at His feet may fall, we'll join the everlasting song and crown Him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown Him Lord of all. Crown Him, ye morning stars of light, who fixed this earthly ball. Now hail the strength of Israel's might and crown Him Lord of all, now hail the strength of Israel's might, and crown him Lord of all. All hail King Jesus, all hail Emmanuel, King of kings, Lord of lords, Bright morning star, and for all eternity, I'm going to praise Him, and forevermore I will reign with Him. All hail King Jesus, all hail Emmanuel. King of kings, Lord of lords, bright morning star, and through all eternity, I'm going to praise Him, and forevermore, I will reign with Him. seated. Well, the one important thing in my favor right now is that in the Fourth chapter of Luke, I believe, when Jesus went into the synagogue after the scripture was read, he sat down to teach them. So, otherwise, you know, I, I'd be doing cartwheels down the aisle. 
but, uh, well, not quite. Well, I full information and my best, most athletic, lim limber time of life, I couldn't turn a cartwheel. But you got to love me anyway to get to heaven. All right. Don't have your sermon outlined for you uh, on the little cheat sheet. Very nicely done, but uh, my laptop works and my printer works, but I uh, somehow I've missed on how to interface them. I got stuff on the laptop that's, oh, pretty good stuff. But I can't get it onto the printer. If I could get one copy off the printer, I'd be fine because a printer becomes a copy machine. I can just zippy do. But, uh, well, if, if beggars were horses, no. If wishes were horses, beggars would ride. And that's kind of where I find myself on some of this stuff. But on the back of your sheet, our topic for this morning is a question. Who knew? Well, there's a lot of stuff about that. In the world in which we live, always had, always has been. But uh, not getting much better, actually. Everybody knows everything, excepting that uh, most of them don't know anything. There's a way of putting that, and I thought I had it memorized once upon a time, and <laughs> what I had memorized once upon a time and what I can spout off right now aren't always the same thing. You ever notice that? Well, uh, you, you will maybe by the time you're 92, but uh, he who knows not and knows not that he knows not is a fool. He who knows not and knows that he knows not is a learner, teach him. He who knows and knows not that he knows is asleep, waken him. He who knows and knows that he knows is wise, follow him. Well, we really have only one perfect person at that point, and that's the Lord Jesus. He knows, and he knows that he knows, and if we're wise, we'll follow him. Or to put it the other way, it works both ways. If we follow him, we'll be wise. Okay. But I want to take you to the fourth chapter of Acts. And if you will turn in your Bibles with me, please, to Acts chapter 4. Oh, I see people turning pages. That's good. I like that. Uh, well, I, I can't turn the, to the reference, Pastor, because I don't have my Bible with me. Well, I could get all cranky and say, well, why not? <laughs> Do you go to work without your tools? He's not supposed to. In fact, do you ever hear of somebody getting the sack? Meaning being fired? Back in the old days, workmen owned their own tools and carried them with them to work in a gunny sack or something. And uh, they would leave the tools and take them to the job where they were, you know, uh, where they need them to do the, that particular day's work. But when a guy just wasn't producing and 
they didn't want to keep him on, they would take his gunny sack, or whatever it was, and they would gather up his tools from wherever they were, they would put him in that sack, and when the fellow came to check out, clock out from work, they would hand him the sack. Oh, getting the sack meant they were through with you. But anyway, Acts chapter 4, and I'm going to start at the first verse, so you can just follow along with me. Now, I'm reading the New King James Bible, which if you're used to the King James, you'll do fine with it. And if you have some other version, uh, somebody, oh, I hate to hear a different version. I always like to hear a different version because I can compare it with whatever I have. Oh, I see here. something here I didn't see there, but let's do what we can with this. Now, we're with Peter and John in the temple, and they're teaching, telling people about Jesus. Oh, that's, that's against the law, don't you know that? Well, it's getting to be more and more against the law in our country, but that's a different issue. Now, as they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the guard, temple, and the Sadducees came upon them. You know, I'm glad I'm not a Sadducee, because they're sad, you see. Uh, you've probably heard that one. They have it. Where you been? But anyway, uh, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection of the dead, or from the dead, and they laid hands on them. Oh, that never happens in this country. Oh, really? Maybe you haven't been to a school board meeting when you've tried to discuss some things they were teaching to the early grades. Uh, you might find yourself, well, quit, Drysdale, get back to the message. Okay. Um, they put them in custody until the next day. But it was already evening. However, many of these who heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Now, this was in a day of much more, we think, some of you poor dear ladies think this, we're a patriotic society, not like then. Uh, there were 5,000 households became Christian house. doesn't say that here, but it says men uh, back those in those days. That's about what it meant. Well, we aren't that patriarchal, are we? No, we're not. We're not patriarchal enough. I see, I see beautiful people out here, every single one of you, but I see single ladies and I see some single men, bless your hearts. And I know some of you are, your partner has gone ahead and that's okay, so has mine. But uh, what's the expression? Church widows? Church widows, uh, hubby's not dead, he's just home watching the TV or reading the paper. Church is woman's business. No. Well, how come the church is so largely run and the work largely done by the women? I'll tell you why. It's because the men don't. Okay, now I'm not going to chew on you guys because you're here. Uh, I'm preaching to the choir. At least I hope I am mostly. But... Uh, when there were 5,000 men, he became Christ followers. Uh, there was a lot more people than that that actually this happened to. Okay, 
verse 5. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? They had healed him, a disabled person. Terrible thing. What business do they have healing people? That's not their business. We're going to straighten this out. Yes, we are. Yeah. Oh, that was my uh, little addition. Verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made whole, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you criminal, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by the builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Now that's a quotation of the Old Testament. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men, whereby we are must be saved. Now when they heard they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were under un, uneducated and untrained. King James says ignorant. Untrained and educated men. They marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed Standing with them, they could say nothing against it. Who knew? Who knew that Peter and John had spent time with Jesus? Well, get my notes a little closer, a little more light. Okay. Don't sure yet. Uh, this is Palm Sunday. Now this scripture, of course, is some days after the original Palm Sunday. A lot of things have happened. But this was a culture that had certain expectations. The Sanhedrin, the Jewish council, the, the educated people, the faculties of the seminaries, <laughs> yes, uh, those who knew best, they knew that Jesus has, these men had spent time with Jesus they didn't understand any of this, but they knew. Uh, I don't know if we have any PhDs here today. Do we have any PhDs? Oh, poor us. We don't have it. Oh, well, how many of you have a master's degree? Any of you? Come on, some of you. Somebody must have a master's degree. No. Oh, we're in great trouble, folks. We don't have the educated people among us to keep us straight. Oh, well, we know what the educated people of that time were doing. They were trying to hang on to the power they had, and that was more important than supporting the truth. 
Boy, could I go on a sidetrack here, but I'm not going to. But I want you to know it's hard. <laughs> um, they, they knew, but they didn't know. I always like to give people some goals for a message. A couple of them. What I call a learning goal and a living goal. What do I want you to understand when you walk out this door? Where would you and I no a, a, a learning goal popularity comes and goes what is your target and mine who am I in this world to please well just a thought then a living goal where would you and I be in terms of this living goal. Do I live if I say my, I want to know Jesus. I want to know him better. I want to serve him more. I want to be more like him. All very good. But the living goal is uh, what am I doing about it? We are Christians. We are cross bearers. We are followers of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world but who takes it away by suffering spikes through his wrists and spikes through his feet now I'm about as Protestant as you can get but the place where I'm living has a Catholic background from a Catholic uh, and there's a lovely chapel there, and I, I like that chapel. But in the front of it, there's a little statue. Most, you mostly know what a crucifix is, don't you? Okay, it's a statue of Christ on the cross. Now, I wouldn't want one here. Have to, for you to have to look at and me to have to look at, you know. But I go into that chapel now and then and I just kind of stand and look at that cross. And if you're close to a Catholic church, it wouldn't hurt you now and then to just go in there and stand a few moments and look that crucifix and think that's really me I should be on that cross but I'm not there because somebody took my place and when that was done it was done During some of the earlier wars, Revolutionary War, I believe, and even more so the Civil War, it was possible to pay someone to take your place in the military, and, and he would take your place in the army or whatever. And some of these folk of course, were wounded, and some of them killed in battle. And sometimes a draft board would come after the original. Hey, you haven't served your term in the military. Oh, he would say, so-and-so served it for me. Well, yeah, but he got killed in battle. Yes, I know. And that means as far as you're concerned, I was killed in battle. He took my place, and you can't come after me. Now, that was fair in those days. I mean, that was the law. That's how, how it was done. It's not done that way, at least here in our country. 
has been done for every single one of us sitting in this room. If Satan comes along and says, you belong to me because you sinned. You say, no, 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 you, you have no claim to me. Well, there's a death penalty on you. No. Someone else paid that penalty for me. Aren't you glad? Can I have an amen? <laughs> All right. Isn't God good? Anyway, I'm not careful. I'll quit preaching and go to meddling. But anyway, uh, where are you and I in our personal goals in relationship to what we believe or say we believe? Do you ever get kind of caught up a little bit and say, whoa, I say I'm a Christ follower, but am I living like one? These Jewish leaders, they had seen these two men. They had heard these two men, and they knew that they had been with Jesus. They could have gone to the temple and worshipped. No problem. There may be people who know you go to church, and that's good. I hope they do. But is there something about me or you that people who are more highly educated than we are, but there's something different about you and you and you and you and me. People who hang around me a little bit. Do they know that I have spent time with Jesus? Do they know that you have spent time with Jesus? Just a question. And when I think of all these people, how did the leaders know? I wonder if there were some who in their heart knew that this was true. These men spoke to they believed it to be true, but I mustn't say anything about it or I will be, you know, they'll look down on me, they'll fuss at me, they'll they may get me read out of the out of the council and, and I can't have that. Boy, there's that rabbit track again, but I won't go down it. I'll resist, and I want you to know it ain't easy. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, you ask me after church, I'll tell you. But the leaders knew because they had seen what Jesus had done. They knew this man that was disabled. They'd known him all his life, and they knew that now he was healed. His life was better because he'd met them. Whose life is better? Because they know me. I don't know. There's a couple of people over where I live. The, the mother is in our uh, intermediate care unit. She's not quite down to skilled nursing, but she's not quite up to assisted living either. It's in between. And she has some serious health problems and some of the upstairs isn't quite exactly wired like you and I for it to be. But she's, she knows what she's hearing. And her daughter comes frequently to just take care of her and take her places. And so they, they come and somehow they learn that I would anoint people with oil and pray for them. And every now and then they come to my apartment and here's mother, she's now in a wheelchair, able to get dressed and come in a wheelchair to my apartment and her daughter brings me. Now, I'm not 
making a big sales pitch for anointing with oil, I'm saying that they know at least that much about me. I will pray for them and anoint them with oil. But I have made a little difference in their life. Not much, but a little. There's probably somebody in your life that you've made that kind of difference. And you may be thinking, well, not not me, not much. Oh, probably. See, I can say, well, what's the matter with you? Why don't you get on the ball? No. Many of you people are, are farther down the road than you know. It's ear modest and humble, and that's good. You know, we should all be and I'm working on it, but uh, <clears throat> if there's somebody <clears throat> who knows you're a believer and they're a little bit better for that, God bless you. He will reward you for that. Do others know about me that I have been with Jesus? Do others know about you? Do they know that you have been with Jesus? How did they find out? Full confession. I had a job years ago, a part-time, just common labor job. Believe it or not, I've done some of that, quite a bit of it. But the first time lunchtime came, at this particular place, we sat at a table in the lunchroom, and I had a bag lunch with me that my wife had fixed. And I bowed my head to give thanks. And somebody next to me said, are you sick? And I said, well, no. Went on. And while I had that job, never again did I bow my head to say grace. What a chicken I was. What an absolute immature coward. I was not about to say, now why didn't I? I don't know. No, I was giving thanks for my lunch. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I would have been a bit embarrassed. And wouldn't that have been just a pity for me to be embarrassed? Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. Well, I've been embarrassed more than that since then, but I have just not let it stop me. Our last bishop in the old EUB church was W. Maynard Sparks. Any of you ever know who Maynard Sparks was? If you ever went to an annual conference during those years, you would know who he was. He was an old EU, uh, United Brethren bishop. He was kind of a starchy, uh, company man and all this and, and he went sideways with us a lot because we were so conservative but some of the things he did say stuck in my head and one of the things his mother said to him more than once Maynard just speak a good word for Jesus and he never forgot that God bless him Let people know, and I don't mean stand on the street car corner and yell. That's okay if you want to, but just by doing who you are, being who you are, doing what you do, saying what you say, and not backing off. How many people know that you are a follower of Jesus? God bless you. If they don't know that, let them know. I don't mean to walk up. Oh, by the way, did I ever tell you I'm a Christian? No, it doesn't have to be that way. There'll be an occasion. There'll be a, a, something happen. That, oh, these Christians. You can just say, well, I'm one of them. You are? Yeah. Well, I thought you were saying. I thought you were saying. I am. I'm yeah, just... You don't have to make a speech. You don't have to wear a sign. You'll know. 
when that time comes, I could let these people know that I believe in Jesus. I'm a follower of his. I may be embarrassed. So what? <laughs> Goodness. Nobody ever really died of embarrassment. You may have felt like you were going to die, <laughs> but nobody ever did. Okay. Now, this isn't in my notes, but some of you may not be followers of Christ. And that's all right if you're not. It's just maybe this is the time for you to become one. You mean you want me to be one of those while you're talking about? Yes. Otherwise, what are you? If you're not a follower of Jesus, who are you following? I don't follow anybody. Yes, you do. Now, we're going to very shortly observe the Lord's Supper. And some of you may not be of our background. This is not the table of the Evangelical Church or Wichita Avenue Church. This is the Lord's table. You don't have to have your name on our membership roll to receive the Lord's Supper. You just have to have your, your name written in heaven because you've committed yourself to follow him. And if you haven't made that commitment, this you can't become a Christian by receiving the communion. But I have known of people who made that decision, and that's how they witness to it. And what a day it would be for me if someone were to come to me after oh, by a pastor. I never received communion before, but I did today because I received Christ. I received him. And I, I felt like, well, now I can receive the, the elements of the Lord's Supper. Wow. These moments can be so precious if we let them be. Well, I suffered listening to Pastor Doug drone on for a while. I bless you. Thank you for that. But I was in God's house with God's people, listening to God's word. And as a believer, somehow God fed me. Or as a not yet believer, I became one. You can do any and all kinds of business with God right here in this place. Now, I'm not used to this. If I'm still on the tube, I hope I am. This goes for you too. You don't have to receive bread in the cup to receive Christ. You open your heart. You turn from your sin. You look at the crucified Jesus and believe that it was for you. That's all. Now we are going to have the little serving cups. You folks that are regular here, you're used to it. Uh, yeah, come do stuff worship team or whatever, whoever we're going to do something. <laughs> it's time to do it. But uh, <clears throat> you will receive a little plastic container. And most of you know how to do it or what to do. And if you don't, I'll explain it. I can do it. And believe me, if I can, you can. And I'm not talking about authority. I'm talking about the fingers working. <laughs> Would you hand me one, please? 
Thank you very much. Now I can stand up, but it's kind of a struggle, and I think it scares people. <laughs> so I will remain seated. You will forgive me for that, won't you? <laughs> there we go. I see some heads nodding. I appreciate that. We're here, and right now, this is an upper room. And there's a little tab on the front of this little cup. And there, there are actually two tabs, I think. Take the top one off, and you will see the little wafer representing to us the bread, which Jesus took and broke. Thank you. Well, I trimmed my nails, and I trimmed them too close because I can't get a fingernail in there. You can do this. Had a girl help me. <laughs> oh, bless you. Thank you. Some of you folk who are not familiar with us, there are so many people in this little group who helped me in so many ways. I think they love me. Not because I deserve it, but just because that's who they are. Anyway, this little round ship, Jesus took the bread and said, this is my body. Oh, really? Not really. I know our Catholic friends say, yeah, it is, but that's all right. You know, we can live, believe stuff that they don't or keep us out of heaven. They can believe stuff that we don't or keep them out of heaven either. But think of the grain, the flour, the mill that crushes and grinds and bakes, becomes bread, received by faith in your spirit, the body of Christ, as we share the bread. Then the inner little tab. Think of the grape, also crushed, which represents for us the very blood of Christ, not literally, but in our hearts spiritually. Think of his hands and feet and his side and the crown of thorns on his head for you as we share the cup. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, 
all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. And let all God's people say, Amen. <coughs> Worship team, do whatever. What do I need to do? Okay. <coughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> another song after we dismiss as people are leaving but you're more than welcome to stay and worship with us Kate. 
King of glory Oh how beautiful you are Just one look and I'm forever undone Precious Jesus the one I want to love My life's purpose Is to simply bless your heart Here is all my heart Lover my soul, I saved it all for you, I saved it all for you, day by day I bring this costly offering, I saved it all for you, Jesus all for you. My great rabbi, you are clothed in robes of light. Where could I go? Only you speak words of light. Precious My life's purpose is to simply bless your heart. Here is all my oil, lover of my soul. I saved it all for you. I saved it all for you. Day by day I bring. Costly offering, I saved it all for you, Jesus, all for you. I want to honor you like you deserve it. I want to worship you for you are worth it I will give my life all for your glory My worthy King, my worthy King I want to honor you like you deserve it I want to worship you for you are worth it And I give my life all for your glory My worthy King, my worthy King I want to honor you like you deserve it I want to worship you for your worth it And I'll give my life up for your glory My worthy King Here is all my oil Lover of my soul I saved it all I saved it all Day by day I bring this costly offering, I saved it all for you, Jesus all for you, here is all my oil, lover of my soul, I saved it all for you, I saved it all for you, day by day I bring this costly offering, I saved it all for you, Jesus all for you, here is all my oil, lover of my soul, I saved it all for you, I saved it all for you, day by 
day I bring this costly 